What's going guys? It's been a while. <laughs> What's going guys? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I want to talk to you why I avoid using the for reach or loop through lists when I'm trying to map from one data type to another. Now, have a look at this example here, right? So we have private, set, get authorities. So in here, we have a set, which is initially to empty. Then we get the role or it should be get roles, by the way, in here, we do a for each role, and then we add to the set in here, and then we return the authorities. Now, don't do stuff like this, right? Because this is actually defining every single step of the implementation details, right? So this is the imperative approach of solving problems. And whenever you're working with, you know, lists, sets, maps, you know, try and avoid stuff like this. Now, there is a better way. There is a better way, right? So let's, let, let's just improve on this and you'll see the benefit. So here, instead of us doing all of this and then looping, yada, yada, we'll do this. We'll basically say we want to get the user dot and then get role. And by the way, I need to uh, rename this. So just bear with me. So, oops, let me just rename this. So if I go into get role and okay, cool. <laughs> this should be roles, right? So F6 roles and go back. This is much better now. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say user dot get roles. And then here we're going to say dot and then stream dot and then map. So here we're going to map the role to so basically what you've done just in here right so just like that so let's just take this command c and then paste it in and then we're going to say dot collect and then collect us to set so this is your return type and now let's just return this and have a look so this is much neater to be honest right so here you can see that we're not having to create a new empty list uh, and then specifying how we're going to loop through it and then add to that, uh, oh, actually it was a set and then add to the set and then at the end return the set. So you can see that this is just requesting what we want instead of defining how we want things. So try and use declarative uh, approach. It's much neater. Now let's have a look at another example. So this also is very simple. So if I open bookmarks, and then I think it was comments. There we go. Now here, the same thing. So private void, check for forbidden words. And then you've got um, basically uh, forbidden in here. So maybe this should be, I would say, private final static, right? So let's just make this as a constant. So here, refactor, and you can introduce a constant for this. So forbidden underscore words just like this. There we go. So then this actually is instantiated once instead of you basically instantiating this list over and over again, whenever this private method is invoked. Yeah. So here, list forbidden words, have a look again, for int i, so we are defining how we want to loop through this, then we specify the initial value for i. And then here sometimes is it less or less or equal <laughs> even myself sometimes I, I i i get confused by this right and you can up in situations where you have um, index out of bounds exception for example then again here if and then forbidden get and then i so you, you can see how you are specifying all the implementation uh, details right so instead let, let's swap this around and not use a, a, a for each or a for loop. And we're just gonna tell it what we want. That's it, right? So here, forbidden words. So here, again, I think this is, you don't want to do this, right? Because it's already an array that you have, right? So here, let's just basically say forbidden words dot and then stream. So arrays as stream dot and then any and then match and we have the word so word and basically this is your contains right so here um i think 
is it even contains yes i think basically what you're doing is yeah so you're saying it contains there so let's just take this contains so word dot contains and then instead of saying forbidden here we just say s in here right so maybe let's just say fw for forbidden word so it's much easier to read and there we go so now this gives us a boolean so let's just say any match and basically if in here any match then you can throw so here you can say if any match then you throw this um, exception in here that you've done so have a look so this is much neater right so you can see that we're not basically defining all the implementation details and whatnot but we're just telling it basically what we want so please try and 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 and, and start thinking about how to code like this now the cool thing here is if you want to basically revert this there's a non-match but i think non-match for for uh, this implementation wouldn't make sense but in generally i try not to use you know all the for reach or for i unless i have to do so because sometimes you might need access to the next element or the two next elements or the previous two elements so on and so forth so that's when I, I start to think about using for loops but even then as well sometimes you can use an iterator as well right so basically <laughs> try and use this as much as you can and luckily for you i've got a course on my website which teaches you everything that I'm, i've just explained and how you can move away from imperative to declarative program so if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and if you're not part of the amigo squad community go ahead and join now and uh yeah that's all for now i'll catch you on the next one assalamualaikum